All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Rakugo, Rakugo season, season one, one, episode three. three. Okay. We got quite the backstory episode yes. last episode. Yes, we did. And yet there's still more to be said. Quite a bit Because we more. haven't caught up to the present. So mm -hmm. will they do that here? Or will yeah. that be something they leave for later? I don't know. I hope it's here. Because sure. it was really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Yeah. And uh, we have now a little bit more clarification regarding Yakumo's origins. Mm -hmm. We know a lot yep. more regarding how the teacher-student dynamic started. Uh, right. We know a lot more uh, potentially about why, um, you know, the Rakugo styles were so different. And uh -huh. also why there was that little bit of animosity from Yakumo in the present regarding sure. how his Rakugo was being... Uh, Mm -hmm. regarded or reacted to yeah yes <laughs> in some ways you know uh -huh. rakugo is an experience where you invite a bunch of people to react to you reacting or not really reacting yeah. but acting yeah a, a story we are reacting to these people that are reacting to a story yep quite meta it's, it's quite meta. um yeah but but really good character stuff um and the the dynamic between uh yakumo and sukiroku as they move forward I'm really excited to see what it is because yeah. it's not what I would have expected it to be before we got the previous episode. Right, you which know. means there's more backstory, yeah. lots more yep. stuff that we have to... Like, it, we basically had a a thing in the beginning of the story of, okay, we're going to tell you how we got to this place. Right, because it's almost like they're, they were being set up as like, ah, there were rivals, but... Right. Except they're not. So that means that at some point, Maybe they, they probably rivals. will become yeah. rivals, and mm -hmm. it's not really like they'll become like hated enemies or something like that mm -hmm. but more of the like the bumping shoulders you know kind of sure thing, as they're both trying to push their way forward which is exciting because that means that yakumo actually gets to the point where he enjoys rakugo enough to really pursue it passionately oh uh, whatever that means for him and and maybe why right ever at, he's maybe, doing maybe it. even right at the point where he begins to like it that's when sukiroku dies sure and then he loses all sure. that passion again Oh, so yeah, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below and then come back here to YouTube for the discussion. Oh my God, this okay. show, this show is so good. Mm. Show is so good. They took, they took something that was like, oh, cool. We're actually bringing up this part of history. Yeah. And we're building a lot of drama out of it because it's not just the idea that yeah, they're going to leave, but it's the idea that they're, the party is split and there's yeah. a very real mm -hmm. part of us that knows, wait, there's a point when Sukeroku dies. Mm -hmm. And also yep. there's yep. the fact that just the passage of time means the master probably at least dies of old age at some point, you know, because this is a right. long time ago. Yeah, well, yeah, just the fact that like, just the fact that Yakumo is still alive when he was the age that he was, mm -hmm. you know, back then, which I, I think they might have said 18. I'm not sure. Um, okay. that's, that's a big deal because, you know, if like, that's, that's a solid, what, 70 years, well, we don't know, you know what time it is in the present, well, right. and but the, I would assume mm -hmm. it's at the modern point where certain technological things are right. So, yeah. so yeah, but, but that's, that's, you know, yeah, he's, it's he's three generations or he's something old. like that. He's old. Oh yeah. He, you he's know, he, he's not 60 or something like that. Yeah, like he's, he's approaching 70, I'd say. At yeah. Long, at, 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 at minimum, probably. At minimum, yeah. Um, yeah. Because it could be, it could be in the nineties. I would mm -hmm. say, yeah. Because the average life expectancy in Japan is a lot longer than, say, in America. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. On a on a on an average bit, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one one big thing we got out of this episode was we established some very good things regarding the uh, uh, the relationship dynamic of Sukiroku and uh, Yakumo. Mm -hmm. I know they have their they're their rock names, but names but just for the sake of for the sake of simplicity and mm -hmm. stuff we know what they are it's it's the kiku kiku ho kiku, kiku hiko. hiko and hatsutaro mm -hmm. but um and then boom yeah. well yeah that would that was his og mm -hmm. name that he had before yeah. Uh, yeah. rock ago and stuff but that these two are the reasons why in a lot of ways they have their passions for rock ago but specifically yakumo's passion for rakugo came mm -hmm. because of sukiroku yep and it's almost entirely because of sukiroku and, and that they really do they they really are responsible in a lot of ways and, and and in some cases specifically um 
Yakimo for the survival of Rakugo as a as a thing because like yeah. like the fact that it's like oh yeah all the other older up. students just just left yeah yeah he stepped up big time big time yeah so they each have now this this journey this time period where we essentially did a time skip mm-hmm. because you know the war took a you know a decent amount of time there right. but that time meant something so you know those 40 years from 41 to 45 that's oh, yeah. that's huge and then at whatever point was it you know 46 by the point they came back who knows we'll we'll see but Mm -hmm. um we have you know we have them basically discussing the you know the kind of having a fun banter bit there is a little bit of sukeroku having a little bit of fun at at yakumo's expense but it does seem to be more of a more of a brothers kind of dynamic Mm -hmm. thing and you know Right. Uh, he does mean well, and he looks like yeah. he has a very solid kind of relationship with him. Where it's exactly they they love each other. It's they, the, they love each other. I, a I lot. feel like it's the thing of like you know where when you're with friends, you know if you if you get hurt, they'll be like, oh, are, are you all right? Whereas with best friends, if you get hurt, they'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, there was an interesting dynamic though where we were maybe like, oh, oh, maybe there's actually mm-hmm. going to be a little bit of a maybe there's going to be a little bit of a, a gay thing going on here with regards to yep. uh, Yakumo and stuff because he's like, I'm not so into the three, brothel idea. Yeah, three separate times they they brought up basically, you know, there was some there potential was, affection that's right, you know, was, headed towards Sukeroku's way. Well, well, not I just mean, look at this not guy just that, too. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, exactly. Who wouldn't? But. But the idea of the brothel and then the two other girls, you know, of the, you know, one, mm-hmm. one that he actually did date. Right. Um, and then the other one where it was the, that's a potential future for me. Yeah. And he decided against it. But there does seem to be a definite thing of where, if anything, it's that um, Yakumo might have some, some definite feelings towards... Um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, towards Sukiroku. Sukiroku. <laughs> but um, in the meantime, he was totally comfortable you know having having a good time yep. with the the girls and stuff as well so he might be a little bit just more open in general mm-hmm. um probably in some ways because he had a really um he had a really specific upbringing uh, exactly with the, yeah with being in the geisha yep. in household and stuff so right uh, yeah yeah because I, I wasn't sure if it was like even even with uh playing the instrument what what's it called um anyways but um uh, Oh, the the shamisen. Yeah, the shamisen. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it might even have been something of like the, him playing that is would have been looked at as like you know abnormal because it's like oh no no, no the, the women play the the shamisen kind of a thing you know from behind the the, the screens and whatnot. And, yeah, he's just going around breaking yeah. gender barriers like it's no big deal. He wants to dance at the <laughs> well, well, right, and that and I, I wonder if that was if that was intended of the idea that basically this was also something of him kind of connecting with that 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 uh artistic side of himself not that raku isn't artistic but uh-huh. you know that basically he wasn't able to to make a living out of you know well it's more kinetic in this way as well yeah it's more something with yeah. his hands uh-huh. with his body with his movement and right. stuff like that and even sukiroku brought it up he's like hey i mean i don't know if you can handle a handstand yet but you know that could be something you could practice towards he's like he's like hey i'm just getting the beginner stuff figured yeah. out bro like why are you why are you trying Chill. to make it it's like hey, slow down like i'm yeah. not that good and and the and, whole thing of him eventually trying the the, the bodry erotic stuff mm-hmm. and then it basically gets banned that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. If you if you punish someone when they do something badly, mm-hmm. usually it's not big of a deal. They, they'll even be expecting it potentially, right? Because they have their own critical evaluation, right? Exactly. Because they because they know like, oh man, you know, I whatever. didn't do that well with that, right? Right. Exactly. So so it. But the thing is, is if you, if someone does something really good and they work hard on mm-hmm. it. And then you punish them for that. Yeah. Oh, man. That sucks. And the thing is, like, and it's not like it was something where Yakumo had already been, like, um, he had already been doing it. And it's just like, oh, that sucks. That's just sort of the luck of the draw. Mm-hmm. But this was basically his, you know, marshalling his efforts to basically be like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna treat Rakugo seriously. I'm going to make it mine in this way that maybe only I can, mm-hmm. right? You know, or, or that... W- you know this way that will work for me when the other ways haven't right um and nope nope yep. so so now you know the whole feeling of like okay great that was a waste of time and now i'm even more behind and and now i can't go with them to you know to the front and everything like that but then the whole idea of the blessing in disguise where the fact that he didn't go with him to the front you know 
ended up being a very good thing. Yeah. Um, I want to bring up this Zenza thing. The idea that because of his rank as a Zenza, which is a performer class, I believe, that right. she was actually in a higher class of performer because maybe being a musician's apprentice of some kind, an instrumentalist or what have you, sure. gives her a certain rank, or it's tied to some aspect of her family or or what have you, something to do with her birth, probably. Yeah. But I find it, I find it rather interesting that this Zenza thing is brought up as a plot point, with something that doesn't have anything to do with Rakugo, which means there's maybe a potential bit of a disconnect of it being with Rakugo. So it might actually be something to do with um, where he was born or how the circumstances of his birth. Now, I'm certain it's a performer-based thing, uh -huh. but there might be there might be something else there. Well, yeah, well. I feel like that's just one of those statements where it's we don't understand it's a cultural all of the thing. All, yeah, we don't understand the culture behind it. So, you know, we we don't really know much of why other than the fact that it has something to do with him being a Zenza. Yeah. Um, um, so she goes back to the countryside, and mm -hmm. she says, "Don't forget me." Now, I, I love fox and the hound type scenes here. I love the type of thing of where life pulls people that love each other apart. Fox and the Hound is, I think, one of the most like, like, <laughs> like mixed bag Disney movies. That's out your there double barreled shotgun to the heart kind but of it, like. Yeah, movie. I don't think it's one of the best Disney movies or even like one of the, the really mm -hmm. good ones. But I think in terms of what they did with the emotional aspects of right. the, the, the brotherhood, the, yeah, the, the, focus the relationship that they of love. Chose that, for the story. Yeah. yeah, that was mm -hmm. so painful at the end and too real. And this is a thing that happens all the time, all, all the time. Mm -hmm. And the idea that this was the just before the war mm -hmm. and well, now you know well, then he basically mm -hmm. has to be alone so it's the convergence of not only you know the the woman that he's he's you know getting very mm -hmm. close to leaving but then also his master and his best friend oh yeah all leaving yeah. within the span of a short period of time oh and the rock ago that he right. was yeah wanting like, to practice and you know perform uh -huh. i feel like it's the the whole idea of her saying "Don't forget me." One, I mean, that's huge. I mean, like uh, another one. The, the where I, where my mind went wasn't Fox and the Hound. It was Coco. The remember me. Um, oh sure. Uh, yeah. But the the other thing is that they're keeping Rakugo alive. They're making mm. sure that people don't forget Rakugo. Right? right. Yeah. And here they go from her saying, "You know, do I have to say goodbye? Remember me." Yeah. And then they go to the thing that he's trying to keep alive, and it's. Band. Yep. Just like that. It's gone. Just like that. And it will not be remembered. You know, like 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 it's the it's the nope like alright, we're just we're just putting this away and and yep, there there we go. Like it never yeah. existed. Maybe that's the kind of thing where they'll bring it back to the present and then you'll find out that they're working towards unbanning certain types of rock. Sure, ago, possibly. And that'll be kind of a cool thing yeah. that the new guy can end up bringing into this whole thing here. But then we get but, the repeat of Zenza again, where we realize that it is actually just an entry rank as a performer. Mm -hmm. But in order for them to become a the higher rank Futatsume, um, they need to have other Zenza other in there. Right. Which I assume means on some level that they need to do what the usual thing is with any type, type of, of, of learning dynamic. Because you need to be able to pass on what you've learned, at least right. even in the slightest bit. Mm -hmm. To someone else underneath yeah. you because the chores still need to get done and all that stuff you know and, yeah yeah but did you notice the idea that uh we have this uh we have this interesting thing going on with uh sukeroku he goes out places mm -hmm. and we never know what he's doing the story isn't told from his perspective so we don't know sure. what that is but this is the first time we've seen him come back and he's it's kind of the thing of oh what what's going on and, you know, something bothering you? No, he lies. Clearly something's bothering him, right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes, there's just no new guy showing up. Now, which, which does, that does make sense. Yes, like, yes. Mm -hmm. But I want to bring up something, something here. Something mm -hmm. about this language here. Because I'm, I'm sensing that this show is brilliantly well written. Not only because of the things that people have told us that it's a masterpiece. But anime, what we've seen so but far. But what yeah. we've seen so far. So, so when someone uses the word just... This is a this is a deflection word. 
Because you know what it's saying is that it's only. Well, okay, yes. Like a lot of times people use that as a deflection, but it, but it also fits here. He's saying, no, it's nothing. It's just that this, you know. Right, right. I just want uh-huh. to bring up the idea that there's potentially something else going on in his life in the background that he's not willing to bring into the Rakugo situation Potentially. Here. And he brings up his current frustrations when he's here, which makes sense. But the idea is that he came here already upset. Like, he came through the, uh, you know. The, uh-huh. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they made there be something else, like you know, if if, if say there was a girl or something like that, right? Well, yeah, but we've or, seen him come, We've seen him come into the area like partially drunk. We've seen him like come back to the area like really late and stuff. I'm just I'm just curious as to to what it is because my my brain kind of jumps to a lot of conclusions whenever a character is alive and we know they're going to die at some point in the future. So I'm always trying to look for little things that are the, ah, here's, you know, here's hints about what's going to lead to that point. Sure. Or at the very least, or at the very least, since they're now dead, Mm -hmm. right, in in present time. Right. There's the idea that you aren't going to get any more from them as a as a person you're not going to see them again you're not going to hear them speak again it's everything they say is super important everything they say is super important but then right. there's also the idea that you don't you don't necessarily know them completely so ah, so when someone's Good gone point. one of the things that can happen is that even if you don't get to know them more by talking to them you might hear stories you might find out more things about them that you didn't know that helps you appreciate or understand those interactions that you did have right Ooh, yeah Good so if point. they did want to do something like that here not necessarily where you know yakum only figures out about finds out about it after sukuroku's dead but you know the idea that basically they don't necessarily share absolutely everything right even though they right. are incredibly close so so i'm all i'm all for them deciding to do that i I don't think they have to though, because I, I absolutely buy no. the idea that it, that it could, that he's so passionate about Rakugo that the idea that basically it is dying because because they 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 keep bringing up this whole idea of them keeping Rak- Rakugo alive and Sukuroku very much is the one spearheading that and Yakumo's taking that uh, like upon himself right right but but he took it on, upon himself originally because of Sukuroku yeah. Um, I, I'm just bringing up there's a there's a couple factors that I am I'm mm-hmm. juggling around in my head and I can't just and something s- doesn't quite add up. Well, no, I I am seeing things start to add up is what gotcha. I'm saying okay. is that when the way my head works is that I take in raw bits of data and then I try to process it and connect it all and see if any of it is relevant mm-hmm. to itself to yeah. each other. There's a couple things that I see starting to become relevant here. One is that there is a point at some point in the future where Suke Roku and Yakumo have a little bit of a... Falling out? Not necessarily or... like a hard falling out, mm-hmm. but something like that. Yeah, yeah, they become rivals at the very least. Mm-hmm. The, right, They're in a different Roku, way than they are now. In a different yeah. way than they are now, right. The usual way that relationships begin to fall apart is a little bit of miscommunication. Sure. And now I'm starting to see evidence of something of, where he's mm-hmm. potentially holding some secrets at the very sure. least mm-hmm. from just other yeah. people at the Rakugo place. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm drawing a little bit of a causal yeah. chain there that could potentially become relevant mm-hmm. if you know evidence, you know, continues to add up to, you know, right. and of course we'll obviously find out what it eventually is once we, mm-hmm. you know, finish the show and everything, but I like to see if I can discern those puzzle pieces coming and being assembled together. Because usually you get the borders of the puzzle first before you come in and see the full picture. You get yeah. that structural pieces set down so that you know that the buildup, especially in good writing here, like where the uh, progression of events for characters that have some kind of conflict, it started early. So I'm even right. hyper analyzing things where you have little subtle jabs coming from Sukiroku about being kind of callous about the you know struggles that he's going through, even though he puts a sab on all of it by complimenting him by you know playing Mm -hmm. saying like hey you've got some strengths for sure you know being Mm -hmm. really physical with him and like really Mm -hmm. like obviously having a good tone of voice about it so you know he's never really feeling um you know really feeling i would say uh well right aggressed upon it yeah it's one of those things where where the the um a lot of that kind of stuff is is 
based around how the other person's taking it. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so you know, true. the the exact words that Sukuroku is saying, in some cases, could be you know considered a negative thing for for sure. one person. For another person, it's like, yeah, this this is all good. You know, right. this is this is in fact gives the person life because it's showing that you know you're being real with each other and you know and not yeah. not walking on eggshells or anything like that, right? For sure. And so far, we haven't seen anything of that to the like that basically sh- so far yakimo and sukuroku are tight tight right? super and, tight and and nothing nothing w- could possibly come between them yeah. but if for some reason something shifted there would be the potential uh foundational elements that mm-hmm. suddenly could become negatives <laughs> right like skipping ahead to the end of the episode here like a sudden uh where where is she uh-huh. oh my god Pretty woman, like a pretty woman, city walking woman, down the street. walking down the street. Yes, exactly. Just suddenly shows up, and she also just happens to be the woman in the ED. Pretty yeah. sure they're the same. Uh-huh. Now, granted, she seemed to be there for the master, but ah, that is true. <laughs> that is yeah. true. But but I mean, she's probably going to end up being uh, Konatsu's mom. Yeah. Like, like I mean. Probably. I wonder if this is actually something that will tear apart the Rakugo house as a whole because we already have the idea that there's something that uh, the master owes, well, the current Yakumo mm-hmm. owes um, the mom of our Yakumo. Uh huh. Who. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I. This yeah. guy might have been the type of guy to, you know, sleep around. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, didn't they already clarify that, that, um, his mom was uh, worked in the red light district. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's not a definite thing that she was necessarily a, a sex worker or something like that. Uh, a sure, sure. She might have just been someone playing musical instruments, or right. she might have been a dancer actually, and that's why you know he wanted to dance or something like that. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things, and and maybe I'm maybe I'm you know reading too too much into this. I'm not mm-hmm. sure because I don't know what they they could take it either way. Mm-hmm. Um, based, so this is basically just just based on just what choices they decide to make in the future. But mm-hmm. um, I feel like this could become a thing where she ends up become, coming between the two of them, not from the standpoint of them both liking her, mm-hmm. but them both liking Sukuroku. Oh, sure. Because one of the things that stood out to me is that it almost felt like, because because this is also Yakumo telling the story, it almost felt like it was also a story of basically his his sexual experience, right? Uh-huh. With with you know the opposite sex from from talking about this was the first girl I dated, you know? Oh yeah, because his, that, his right? line here, where was that? He was saying you something know? like, "I originally dated her because I was curious about what women were like," and it's like, right? Oh, you know, like like in you know she was an honest, charming girl and all that, and they and they got along just great, you know? Oh yeah, but but the idea that um that we haven't seen him really show the same amount of affection to a girl that he shows to uh right i think that's also a prox- i think that's a proximity thing Th- that but- could totally be a thing and 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 the story is about the two of them not about you know their relationships with you know other people and whatnot so right. it totally makes sense but but yeah bringing in a mm-hmm. a a girl into this dynamic that will potentially be a main character that could yeah. showcase a little bit more of what you're talking about Cause, here. Because like, it just provides a better opportunity for it. I feel like if they make it so that if if they if they don't have Yakumo have any romantic feelings for Sukuroku, that it's more of a like um, like a sort of a, a bait and switch of the you know. We we make it seem like the character's gay, but then you know not a, he's not actually kind of a thing. But yeah. I don't think I don't think the show would do that. So yeah, you know, I don't think they would do that because because so. they've they've put in plenty of plenty of foreshadowing and 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 suggestions that that yeah. is what it is. But he, yeah. I mean, he could be a little bit more fluid too, where he's oh yeah yeah both. So mm-hmm. it's not a oh totally totally yeah um yeah. I mean, if anything, what what's very clear to bring up here is that they love each other. Yep, absolutely. they love each other quite a bit. Right, whatever and, whatever form that you know, yeah. takes and has the potential to take, they absolutely love each other. Hence why the Greeks came up with like four or five different words mm-hmm. for love. Yeah. Yep. I think it was actually five. Four. It was or... four. Yeah. Yeah, four. Yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this little moment here where he's like, hey, um, you know, I promise to come back alive. I'm like, yes, yes, that's the origination of the promise that Yakumo then makes them make <sighs> in the first yeah, episode. Yeah. And, and the thing and is... And the pinky mm-hmm. promise thing with the... Uh, 
uh, hey, can you do your Rakugo? It mm-hmm. listening puts me to sleep. And, and he's like, instantly. But it's not just the, that's the puts you to sleep. And it's the, is that is that a compliment or an insult? Right. Because then when um, Yotaro in the first uh-huh. episode listens to the Rakugo of our Yakumo, yep. he falls asleep probably yep. because it was so calming. Potentially, like, like, yeah. But the thing is, is that he brings it up here. He's like, is that a, you know, is that a compliment mm-hmm. or a thing? And then almost within seconds oh yeah yep i'm yep. doing this he goes into like like immediate sleep and it's just like wow <sighs> yeah yep. yep yep i also love that they did the sweet tender one-on-one moment and then immediately went to time passed without mercy yeah, yeah. And it's just like yeah and and the thing the thing of basically him making him promise to come back right well well sukiroku just made the promise no, no, I know, I know. Okay. But but the fact that that happened. Now, from a meta perspective, right, we can look at this and we can say, okay, based on what we know about the circumstances of Sukuroka dying, we know that he comes back, right? Right, yep. But Yakumo doesn't know that. And, yeah. and the And the way they showcase so well that, you know, even though we know he's coming back, yep. Yakumo is absolutely terrified, and of course he is, right? Yep. And then the anime chooses to show brilliantly how much time he basically, like, Mm-hmm. you know soldiers yeah. on through this and even helping keep uh uh the master's wife uh mm-hmm. you know fighting on him and then it shows him and his moment of weakness having to hold yep. himself yep. Uh-huh. together yeah by yeah. doing the <sighs> practice rock <and> roll <sighs> thing holding his own pinky finger uh-huh that's yep. Yep. that's the that's... tear bending well, just it's... melts my heart just mm-hmm. sadness <sighs> beautiful oh. and one of the things that i love about this i absolutely love 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 love, love about this mm-hmm. is that before, Yakumo's problem was that he didn't have the feeling in his Rakugo that mm. Sukuroka did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but the thing is, is that with where he is present time, we know that mm-hmm. there's plenty of feeling. It's not in the same way. It's not demonstrated in the same way. Right. But it's still very much there. And the fact that basically they they used that... They didn't need to tell us, and from that point on, his rock go become, you know, became much more like, you know, emotionally evocative and everything. And, you know, no, we yeah. know that it does because because oh. we see it, we yeah. see it so right there, it. where yeah. it's the thing that, that that keeps him like holding on to to yeah everything, you know. Oh, and, uh, it's so good, it's so good. But I love also this part here, yeah, yeah. the idea when they go back home. The war's Matsuda. over, and Matsuda I, was keeping care of the house for years. There, years, y'all. He was taking care of it for years. This is not just some, mm, oh, it was a few weeks and right, I was right. house-sitting. No, he took care During of this wartime. person and kept it in pristine condition like, because he's freaking Matsuda. Like, just this mm, guy, we, we yep, saw yep, him yep. in two episodes prior to this, and we're like, yeah, this is a good boy. There's, this is a good yeah, guy. There, there is something. There's loyalty here. There is something about characters and stories that I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. And and you know usually it doesn't necessarily work right? quite. Yeah, earnestness basically. Yeah. And and it's oh. and it's hard to pull off with like core characters. You right. Know? Right. But but the idea that basically that that represent and champion how good humanity can be. Yeah. Right. On something just so I, small. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's that kind of a stuff. Like, like that makes me think of, like, wolf children. Like, like yeah. Uh, uh, Matsuda is, uh, uh-huh. is, is, like... That was beautiful. And they mm. went from that to showing him now succeeding in Rakugo. Yep. To then having the, and, without any warning, the day arrived. <laughs> just, the, just the idea of you seeing them coming through the, with their silhouettes through the sun. And it's beautiful. And Yakumo, without even hesitation, just... Drops yep, yep. the broom. I, uh, oh. uh. I I can't deal with that. And like, and and he can't deal with it either. Uh-huh, yeah. He doesn't rush to them. He knows how important this yep, is yep, to the yep. to the mistress. And he goes, uh-huh. yeah. Mistress Matsuda son, calling yeah. them both for mm-hmm. one. That's also really important. That he calls Matsuda, mm-hmm. and uh, oh, uh, and uh, Matsuda can't. Yeah. <laughs> Matsuda doesn't get anyone to embrace, but he's so happy. And uh, also, I, like, I I love I love his slow walk that uh-huh. turns into a run as yeah yeah like the animators were like okay we've got to nail mm-hmm. this like we've got to yeah. nail this he's like slowly walking it, because yeah. remember his leg is not magically oh, healed or uh-huh. anything yeah and he doesn't so have this pain. probably hurts him in order to move that fast well, well and also and it's probably the fastest he can move 
Yeah. But that little skip at the end. Right. Where and, it's like he's launching off of the yeah, good foot right. to get that extra Trust, bit of... Well, well, and trusting that... He'll catch him. He'll catch him. And, and the, the the way that at the beginning it's slow uh, because it's almost like he doesn't even believe his eyes that, that he's here. And... Uh, I mean, uh, and then he, uh, he does the, the brother thing of, hey, you stink. Yeah. And he's like, hey, well, you smell good. And also, also, mm-hmm. here's what's special here. Here's what's special here. Their Rakugo names are for their performance, right? Mm-hmm. But here they call each other yep. by their original oh, yeah. names. Right. Shinsan well, well, and Bon. And it's just... Well, and, and, and the fact that they've been doing that my the entire time. Because, because the thing is, is that, that uh, their connection runs deep. It runs deep. And, and uh, deep roots are not re- reached by the frost. Like, this is... Yes, uh, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. And then the way he's like, hey, didn't I tell you? Yeah, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And then as we came of age, we quickly ascended to the rank of Tatsume. So now they get to uh, become roommates. Yep. And, and be impoverished hand to mouth, you know. Yep. Art- struggling together. artists. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's, the, that's the tough life, but that's where yep. bonds of tight friendship are formed. I feel like... Now, what what's, I think is important here is that uh-huh. they do give us this little bit of the tailwinds of Rakugo's popularity was tremendous. Mm-hmm. Meaning the tailwind, the end, basically, of Rakugo's popularity. The last gust, so to speak. Sure. That's yeah. that's kind of what that means, right? So right. they get pushed, and it was pushing them into their first um, taste of young stardom. Mm-hmm. But then they go, hello, the girl is here. Then everything changed. Meaning, when, when everything <laughs> changed when the uh, uh-huh. pretty woman yeah, attacked, yeah. you know, like. Yep, yep. Like this is this is something where they're like, oh, everything was yeah. daijobu. Yeah. But then we have a character just bumping onto the scene, just and just bouncing along, and we should be excited in some ways because I think this is a fun development. Mm-hmm. But the way the story is being narrated from someone who knows what's going to happen, someone yeah, it's who's the, in the future right, perspective, it's the, looking back, this was where it all went to shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically like this is probably where it could have all been great, mm-hmm. but it didn't go so great. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be hard to look at ending. her character in a little bit of a optimistic light. Let's just say. Yeah. Well, we know that she's not around in the modern day, and we don't That's necessarily true. know why. And, but and you brought up the well, she's obviously Konatsu's mother theory, yeah, that, which I think, I think just makes yeah. perfect mm-hmm. sense, right? Because I mean, I mean, you know, okay, maybe she's coming here for the master. You know, maybe maybe he's paying her good money or something. I don't know, right? Whatever. Um, since he does seem to have that as a. Uh, a habit but i mean maybe her mother is another you know yakumo type situation sure the, sure hey, or, you know or just mom. or just like i mean well she's there you know she's got this good looking guy like Su- sukiroku i mean well that's the thing sukiroku and him just left actually oh that's so right that's, that's why that's it's actually right. going to be fine in the most part for the beginning mm-hmm. because in some ways they're, they're not going to be there but they're probably gonna you know still stay in touch with the master and all that and but but here's something Their that paths will cross. here's something that I, I I want to bring up though is that uh, you know tell him that Miyokichi is here. Miyokichi sounds like a last name, mm-hmm. so it does fit the potential thing of you know my mom Miyokichi. Sure, you know it. it, yeah. it, it, it well, and he'll understand. Like it's like okay, so it's so like this sounds... isn't for your ears, Matsuda. Uh huh. Right. Right. Which is like hey hey Matsuda. You can trust Matsuda with anything. <laughs> That's true. But Matsuda, if I you am, don't trust Matsuda, we can't trust you. Like <laughs> Matsuda feels like he's going to be this much quieter and more um, just ever present Iroh. Yeah, I was gonna like, say yeah. like kind mm-hmm. of character. Yep, yep. But but this was a fantastic. And right now, episode. Azula just showed up, and it's like, oh, don't do that, don't do that. No, no, this. No, that's where the connections end with Avatar: The Last Airbender. Just, just, just keep bring Iro and nothing else. All oh, right, you're like, no, I don't want to think about what kind of connotations that. Yeah, no, Good no, point. Good no. Point. <laughs> I love when we speak telep- telepathically to each other, and these people can try and interpret what we're speaking about. But it's it's all good. It's all like, good. What are you talking about? Both are very well written yeah, stories. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Big thunk here. But, so, y'all. This mm. was an episode. Was this so is good. a show. Yeah. Thank you so much for getting us to watch the show. Oh. Finally, it's so good. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for watching the entire reaction and the discussion. Yes. Y'all are some mm. proper, I don't know, uh, uh, 
Yeah, audience members. I don't, I don't know, know, I don't know. what would be the name that we speak to the Rakugo audience as a as a whole, but yeah, Rakugo, y'all. Yeah, I, I kind of mm-hmm. want to like find it and where it is nowadays and stuff like that, and try and like mm-hmm. figure out what are the tenets of it. What we, what we need to do is we just need to like go to Japan at some point and then like, <laughs> sure, know, sure. put that on on the bucket list. So we can be Zenzas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. But y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full length reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access, so you can. Check with us in the community about this show about other anime about just whatever and you can also talk with jake about the book he wrote that's yes really awesome. that's right you like rakugo so you must love stories right right right, right. right. um so he my sci-fi one. novel battle lines is available on amazon the mm-hmm. link's in the description below there's some reviews on there uh, that i highly recommend recommend you check them out to see what other people thought of it mm-hmm. if you do get it make sure to leave a review of your own yeah so if any of that interests you we'll see you there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.